Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here yet again for another breakdown of a couple of commitments that the Wildcats secured just before signing day. Two of them from the JUCO ranks right here. One that was on our radar and that we even alluded to in our signing day show that we did. Uh, we assumed it would happen and eventually became unofficially official during that period. And another one that jumped out and got us out of nowhere last night. Uh, probably really the only surprise heading into signing day for K-State. There's a look at the two guys below, though, if you're watching on the YouTube. K-State has added a defensive lineman from Butler. Uh, obviously a pretty good steady pipeline of former Butler players to come to K-State. But Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, uh, he'll be a member of the defensive line. And then they added, I mean, just an all-time <laughs> player already. Dante Strap Thomas from Southwest Mississippi. Uh, here's the deal on him. First, I just like the guy going by Strap. But number two, instantly one of the videos we saw last night of him was him just laying the wood on a guy and shooting his helmet five yards the other direction off of his head. Uh, it was a beautiful thing to see. So we'll talk about both of these guys. We'll start with Malcolm Alcorn Crowder. Uh, he's the guy from Butler going to be in on the defensive line. And I think this is kind of an interesting one because you and DY have been all over it, but he kind of fits what K-State is trying to do schematically with these guys on the defensive line now. Yeah, what we're seeing right now is a progression of kind of what K-State wants to do along the offensive or defensive line, excuse me, um, where in the 3-3-5, three, three, they're kind of moving towards uh, more heavy defensive ends. It, it's so they they don't get pushed around more because in an odd man front, you need as much bulk and as many big people as possible. And we've seen it. Um with a few other schools, I mean, Texas really kind of comes to my mind of like what you would want with defensive linemen. And that, that's an unfair comparison, obviously, because Texas is in a different stratosphere than K-State recruiting wise. And that that's sounds harsh, but that's just how it is. Uh, but what you can do is you can supplement that with like JUCOs and transfers. Like we've seen this now with Travis Bates, the defensive end from Austin P. And now we're seeing this with Malcolm Alcorn Crowder from Butler, where you want a heavier guy on the defensive line. And especially with Javon Banks also moving to defensive end, you're, you're going to see a lot more heavy bodies on the defensive line for K-State this year than you saw in years past. I mean, even the first year that they ran the 335, the only real heavy defensive end that they had on their entire roster was Jalen Pickle. Never forget Jalen Pickle's interception that he had. Yes. Uh, that big time there uh, for the the player from Cimarron. Uh, well, look, so Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, this is a guy, we talked about it a lot yesterday, uh, just the number of guys that you go through K-State's class and see that they have four status from somewhere of the four major recruiting services, and he is one of those guys. And we've seen a, a combo of things from junior college dudes the last couple of years where they've come in and some have played right away and others have had to sit and take a red shirt, take a year to kind of learn, and then the expectation is, okay, now you'll be ready to move forward. Malcolm Alcorn Crowder is a guy, though, that is he going to be out there immediately next season making an impact? The expectation is for him to be able to play right away. It's why they really prioritized him. And what's interesting about kind of how K-State has gone about with JUCOs is that it's been more of the guys that they've gotten in the early signing period. Those are the guys that they really prioritize and they think, okay, we can come in and this guy's going to play right away. Like we saw that with Kobe Savage. We saw that with Will Lee uh, last year. Yeah, and the guys that they sign in the summer, uh, like Daniel Cobbs, like Nikendra Steiger, we see those guys kind of coming in red shirt. So it'd be it's interesting to see kind of what the plan is for even like Strap Thomas, and we'll get into that later. But Malcolm Alcorn Crowder was signed because he's going to be able to play right away, and the expectation is for him to play right away. And it helps that obviously, like being a JUCO guy, he's a December graduate, so he will be on campus in January and go through all the spring practices as well, which is huge. And he was a wanted man. This is another thing that we've talked about with him. Florida seemed to have some serious interest in him, but he also had offers from Miami, USC, South Carolina, Mississippi State, NC State, Minnesota, Cincinnati, and Houston, uh, the other Power Four offers out there. So he was a wanted man. K-State was able to get him. 
Uh, and that was a that was a big deal for them to be able to get that. And now they would hope to have another piece of their defensive line next year that kind of fits what they're trying to do. Now uh, we can move on to the guy that you know you're trying to ex- hold your excitement back for. Uh, let's talk about Strap Thomas and what you've been able to gather in the last basically 14 hours because prior to last night when he just announced he was committed, we didn't know who he was. Yeah, I mean, ev- everything with uh, Strap Thomas happened extremely, extremely fast. And I mean, obviously, the, the best thing about him uh, for me personally is I don't think I'll ever call him Dante. Like, I, I think I'm, I might call him Strap exclusively um but what's interesting about him is and and you pointed this out when he started at northwestern state he actually already has gotten a medical red shirt which is interesting to me because now he becomes a more valuable player because he has three years to play too so he still has a red shirt left so it'll be interesting to see where he goes from there and this is no hyperbole uh because i've kind of seen this from other people that have said this he might be the biggest hitter to ever commit to k-state like it's not just that first play where that guy's helmet went went off there was multiple times where i i saw uh when i was doing his signature spotlight where he just beat the crap out of a receiver coming across the middle um, what it, I'm interested to see kind of where he fits and which safety position he'll end up playing. I imagine that that'll be one thing that Chris Kleiman addresses during his signing day press conference today. Um, what And then along those lines, like he's probably better off right now suited against the run uh, because it just plays more into his physicality. So we'll kind of see where he goes from there. Um, he had a lot of group of five offers. So, and good group of five schools as well. UAB, Troy, Coastal Carolina, all had offered him. So you kind of see that and you're like, well, why is K-State going after him? Well, go go look at Kobe Savage's offers when he committed to K-State. Uh, and when he committed to K-State, he was actually committed to North Texas. Well, and, you know, another thing about it, looking at kind of Strap Thomas in the background, so – like this is a guy, he, his first two years, you mentioned that he started at the FCS level. He was at Northwestern state in Louisiana, got the medical red shirt, his first year there played in 12 games in 2022, had semi-productive numbers. And you know, the best way to kind of get a gauge for him last night, I immediately went, was like, okay, so he played at this level. Let's see how PFF graded him out. Look, they, you know, they gave him a really good tackling grade in there. The coverage leaves something to be desired. Uh, but that's also something that he probably improved upon this year at the JUCO level. And kind of like what you're saying, like if you just see traits in these guys, you can take them and this staff feels like they can make them into something. And look, I, I don't think there's any denying that this staff has had a lot of success with defensive backs at K-State. Oh, yeah. And the, this uh, commitment and signing of Strap Thomas kind of makes sense when you look at the roster standpoint. Because they needed a, a somewhat older guy, but it was probably going to be hard to get two transfer safeties to come in, especially with already getting Jordan Riley Scott from Ball State, where you probably wanted to take one of the two transfer portal guys and then add a Juco guy, especially a Juco guy that has a red shirt, because you don't necessarily need him right away. But if you have him on the back burner, kind of like what they did this year, and I know that they added them late, uh, but with uh, Daniel Cobbs and what they did with Nick Andre Steiger before, where they could play in a couple games next year and just kind of be on the back burner and play a lot uh, in the future. So Strap Thomas, you might not see right away, but it wouldn't shock me if he plays in at least the four games in red shirts. Yeah, look, I, I think you know both of these guys provide something to K State uh, that that should have people excited, and you know, the fact again that, that Thomas has. The, the three years to play two is significant because you can be flexible with him. And then Malcolm Alcorn Crowder wanted man by a lot of good, good places. And, and he also uh, has three years of eligibility left. Yeah. And that's a big deal too. I mean, especially when you think about like how much turnover has come and will come on the defensive line, because, you know, it's not just the guys you lost this year, but it was big to get Brendan Mott back, but 
he's just going to be gone next year now. So you need to have some continuity there. Uh, and that's what they uh, will have with Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, hopefully. So two Juco additions for K-State just before signing day. Seems like uh, both guys are highly thought of and they are all aboard uh, for K-State right now. What do we think of the the the, the train theme on uh, signing I, day this year? I, I really like the train theme. I, I It looked really good. It brought back a lot of nostalgia for me with like the OG cat train videos. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that they they try to do more old school cat train next year now. Yeah, that's kind of my thing is that look, if you're going to if you're going to do that, then you need to commit and bring the cat train back, you know? So there there's a look on the YouTube right there. This is Strap Thomas's our guy uh <laughs> right here. So I I I'm not opposed to the train thing. I liked it. It's creative. I at least like that K-State each year is trying something too. Yeah. Other than just, you know, like West Virginia and Texas Tech, they just put out like generic videos. It's like, yeah, this is supposed to look cool. Eh, okay, whatever, you know? So uh, I'm I'm down with it. It's good. Uh, and the K-State creative team uh, strikes again, able to come through and deliver something much different than what anybody else was trying out there. So uh, I give them props for it and uh, shout out to our, our new guy, Strap Thomas, who instantly has just become like an all-time K-State recruit. We don't even know what he can do on the field yet. So uh, we'll monitor that moving forward. Yeah, I mean, half the battle with uh, those signing videos is trying to be creative and doing something unique. I haven't seen yeah. anybody else do a train. It's true. But, but everybody was all aboard like the NCAA football stuff, and that that's kind of been the most popular thing recently. Yeah. So it was good to see K-State kind of go away and be out of the box. I mean, eh, that that's part of it. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought the sauce last year was fine. Um, I I think the the players probably liked it too that they all got like a bottle of sauce with them on it. I I would say uh, I, I think the the Lego one they did a couple years ago that probably got the most love nationally. Yeah, uh, Legos is probably my favorite one that they've done. Yeah, I mean that's pretty creative, and I may, maybe it didn't take as much time as I'm giving them credit for, but it feels like that probably would have taken a lot of time. I mean, all this does. Well, uh, they do a great right. job with this stuff, but I'm just it's good that K State is doing something different than you know Texas Tech or West Virginia, like uh, these bland videos. Get out of here. PCU didn't even post a video. They they just did like a a picture, and that was that. That's pretty lame. Uh, I'm looking, let's see here. Um, trying to see if there's anything. Yeah. I mean, like hey, you did a video, but it's not really anything special this year. It's like a generic shot of like the lockers and they pan up to like a TV and it's highlights. So, um, yeah, I don't know. K-State, K-State did a good job. We might have to do a show where we rank uh, the big 12 signing day videos and see where it went, but Oh, uh, the, yeah. main pr- the main purpose of this was to let everybody know that K-State got themselves a new duo from the JUCO ranks on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, be sure to stay locked in with K-State Online for all of your recruiting coverage. You can read up on every single member of this 2024 class for K-State with the signature spotlights that Drew did. So go over to On3, check that out right now, and uh, also stay right here for any other additions to likely the transfer portal at this point that K-State is able to haul in because uh, we'll have plenty more coming your way. And then also basketball and football coverage as we are just over a week away from kickoff in Orlando and K-State basketball taking on Wichita State tomorrow night in Kansas City. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching K-State Online.